bring you about the Uni PX30 here, specifically in the silver. And, and you know what? I just don't get it. I don't. There's so many different silvers out there. What is so great about the Uni PX30 silver in particular? As soon as I said that, I just heard the comments lighting up. But seriously, I mean, you've got the crink silver, which is uh, loved by all, but is ungodly expensive. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, scratch that. You've got the Molotov liquid chrome, which... Okay, I guess that makes crink look cheap, which can't be good. Okay, so let's try that again. You know, you've got a nice grog extra flow paint here in the silver or chrome. You've also got the 902 marker paint from On The Run, which comes in a chrome itself. But I mean, those aren't that cheap either, actually. And because I want to know why everyone loves this Uni PX30 silver so much, we're not only going to be doing a surface tagging test with the Uni PX30, we're also also going to be putting the silver paint formula in here head to head with the 902 marker paint, the grog, and you know the other ones that I just mentioned to really see which of these silvers shines the nicest. And with that being said, there are a couple of things about the Uni PX30 silver that I bet you didn't know. So just so everyone knows, this is a metal body marker. It's got that good old mixing ball in it. Extra loud edition, of course. But here's what makes this marker unique. Number one, it's actually got a pretty rare paint formula in it, and that's because it is an oil-based paint formula. Now, oil-based formula tend to do really well on those grimier surfaces. They tend to be able to cut through a lot of dirt and still settle into surfaces, and because of that, they do really well over time in weather. And number two, this is another one of those super high-quality valve-actuated Japanese markers. But here's what most people don't know about it. If you look on the side really closely, it actually says that it's made in Vietnam. Something sort of interesting there. So these are roughly six US dollars on most graffiti sites that you'll find, which sounds pretty reasonable, but if you follow me over to where we're going to do our tag testing and our tag testing area, I will tell you the one biggest reason that the Uni PX30 Silver is not as good as graffiti writers think and why I think it's massively overhyped. Alright guys, so I know nobody is going to believe me, but that is why I have to show you this right here, right now. We've got a brand new PX30 here in the silver, of course, and obviously the silver oil paint formula is gorgeous, undeniably. You can see here, I'm unscrewing it by uh, doing righty tighty, so it's one of those markers that does the opposite thing of the righty tighty lefty loosey, but when you unscrew it, oh, just look at the silver paint for you. You can see the valve actuation there as well. This is a really well put together marker. But here's the one big thing graffiti writers need to see before they get one of these PX30s in the silver. This marker legitimately comes less than half full. Like you can see how far down the silver actually starts there in the reservoir of the marker. So I'm not going to drone on and on about it, but that is something that I never hear mentioned. And that's something that every graffiti writer should know about the PX30 here in the silver, but I won't drone on and on about it. We're going to take a good look with our tagging test at the actual silver formula in the PX30 and the actual marker itself. While we tag some names up on finished plastic, glass, and some finished wood surfaces as well. So let's get into it. We're starting off tagging some names up of patrons over on our Patreon page, as well as some subscribers who have asked for hit offs. The Patreon is three bucks a month, it's the price of a coffee basically, and I try and upload one exclusive video there each month, so feel free to check it out in the corner of the video here. But right away with this silver, you are seeing just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful silver. It's bright, vibrant, reflective, it's everything you would want in a silver paint formula. And the first thing you notice with any chisel tip is the nib. I'm a nice frayed nib enjoyer, if you will, right? And this one, it's not too hard when it comes. So it was 
fairly comfortable right away. In general, chisel tips I'm not a big user of, so they always feel a little bit awkward for me, as you can probably tell, but the nib here right away felt pretty solid, in a good way. But we're gonna talk about this oil-based formula, because one thing about these oil-based formulae, and this is true, you can see with all of these tags really, I was writing over some pretty serious inks there, or like remainders of inks, and they just cut right through it. Like they just go over it. There's no bleed through from the inks. The oil base just says stop. It's our turn now. And, and that's basically what happens. And it's those oil-based properties that make it so good for cutting through grime, writing over top of other things, including other formulae, dirt, grease, etc. It really is a top-notch formula here, and you're seeing that on display with our tagging test on this. As far as the brightness, I'm glad that our surface here is a little bit darker just because of, I did a very rough buff to keep a bit of darkness there. It's a bright enough silver, but it's sort of a mid-tone as well. Obviously, it's going to depend on the angle of reflection of light. It looks a little bit dark from some angles, and then if there's a light right on it, it looks quite bright. So you can use it on a variety of surfaces, is what I'm saying, or a variety of environments. As for the finished wood, you can see it very clearly cover up what was basically a pentel white mixed in with a bit of incredible ink. This stuff just tore right through it. You're seeing it most prominently on that surface. There's no bleed through from the tags under it. And you know, it felt really good to write with on a just slightly rough surface like that wood was. And the last thing I wanted to test it on was glass. Glass is always a classic, right? And this thing, you know, it's a classic as well. It held up beautifully. It feels really nice to write with, just like anything else on glass. I'll be really interested to see the buff test of this that we're gonna do over on our Patreon this coming month, especially with the glass, the finished wood. <sighs> can't wait. But you saw it right directly over some other paint formulae there. That's no surprise. Paint can cover paint generally fairly well, and this was no exception. The last thing I should mention about this is, while well, initially I said it's one of those high-quality Japanese markers, the valve system in this functions flawlessly, pretty much. You know, I pumped it a little bit while writing. You just get a very smooth flow. It's just absolutely perfect. You could not ask for a better valve for your chisel tip marker needs. But with all of that being said, I want to give you guys the opportunity to see something that no one else on YouTube is going to show you. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to put down the UDPX30 silver formula next to all of these silvers so that you guys can see exactly what they look like side by side by side. No one else is going to do that, right? And it should be a fun time. So let's get right to it. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are doing this live. First, we're starting off just by putting down a nice layer of the PX30 silver there. Secondly, right next to it, we're putting down the Molotov liquid chrome. And again, you can tell right away, and don't worry, you're gonna see everything, all of these formulae side by side dried so that you can really see the differences between them. But even the Molotov, right away, very consistent. The one after that, OTR 902 marker paint. It's a fairly consistent formula as well. Not as much as the first two there. Thirdly, we've got the Grog Extra Flow paint in the silver. That's something that's less of a consistent silver. You can see the individual bits of silver pigmentation in there. And then lastly, just for fun, we threw in the silver that comes in the Molotov 860DS. And it's really a step below all of these other ones. But although they all look very shiny when they're all wet, we did wait for them to dry. And that's what you're gonna see right now. So these are all of those dried. And I'm panning across them so you can see how the color changes and really get a feel for which ones are the most mirror-like. And what you're gonna see is first just the PX30 silver and the Molotov liquid chrome are on a whole different level. Now the 902 marker paint and the Grog extra flow paint, you can tell when they dry they're just a little bit dull. And that about sums it up with any of your sort of common silvers. That's about what you're gonna get. With the Molotov silver, not the liquid chrome, the other one, it was just even a step below that. I think it might not have been mixed quite as as well as it should have been, but generally it's the same idea as the marker paint and the extra flow paint. But you can just tell when you see 
see panning across how reflective the molotov liquid chrome and the px30 silver actually are but really to me that uni px30 silver is right up there with the molotov liquid chrome and the formula is great so what is my final word on the px30 silver here the paint formula that comes in it it's obviously a great paint formula i don't have any beef with the paint formula it's a nice rare oil based paint formula that will perform really highly but you can't ever count on having too much of it it's gonna cost you a lot of money i don't think there's any refills you get about this much in each of your markers it's pretty rough but the px30 silver will crush any smooth surface with any kind of crap on it it'll cut right through it it's great if there's any things that you guys like about this px30 that i didn't mention leave it in the comments that way we can all see it and have a bit more knowledge if you're wondering why we didn't compare the px30 silver to the crink silver you're gonna want to check out the video in the corner right now where we made a crazy staining ink combining the crink silver with an actual ink so you can check that video out right now and if you're interested like i mentioned the video on the patreon page this coming month is going to be a buff test of the px30 silver formula on all of the surfaces we just tagged it on so if you want to see that buff test and get access to a ton more videos exclusively over on the patreon you can check it out there as well i hope to see you over there until then peace